What's up guys, this is the last Q&A for Top Chef Canada 7 finale episode, episode 8 came out, so this is Q&A number 8. Um, before we start, just wanted to say it's been an insane ride, I freaking loved it. Being on Top Chef Canada was one of the best things that ever happened to me, an amazing time. Um, met so many people, got to reach out and touch so many people as well. Um, through just being on the show, the posts, and everything that I'm doing. And honestly, I can't wait for what's next. Um, just excited for everything that's going to happen. Opportunities, meeting new people. Um, this is just the beginning. I, I didn't win Top Chef Canada 7 title, but I swear it feels like I won already. And I know I did. So, without further ado, let's do this Q&A number 8. Alright. Straight into Facebook we go. Um, Maria. Maria McCullough goes, okay, now that the show's over, when was all this taped? And over how many days did it take to do all of this? Now, obviously, all, even though the show's over, there's certain things that I can't fully go through just because it's the contract, it's how we talk about production and how things are taped or made. But I can tell you that this was all taped during September, October of last year. And how many days did it take to do all of that? Um, September, October. So roughly, was that a couple, uh, what is that, 40, 40 days maybe? Maybe a month and a half, a little bit? Uh, a month or so? So, yep. Um, okay, any other questions here on Facebook? Nope. All right. Instagram we go. By the way, this, if you guys haven't tried, it's Perfect Sports Soda Series. Uh, it's our BCA uh, soda flavored. This one's just root beer, one of my favorites. Go check them out. You can use code Wallace10, get 10% off there. Um, so, yeah, let's go into the Instagram. Tiana Shern. Shout out Tiana, great dancer, killing it out there. Um, she says, Super proud of you being a Top Chef finalist. Congrats. How, was the How has the experience made you a better chef? The experience has made me an insanely better chef because it's it also not just proven to me that I can cook on this beach stage. Uh, I know that going in, but it showed that I can cook in situations that we would never ever experience ever again. Like all these challenges are not real. What I mean by that is that there will never be a situation where you're going to be one person cooking for 250 people within two hours or you got to make a tasting menu out of mushrooms or tomatoes in 45 minutes. Stuff like that doesn't exist in everyday cooking. Um, so for the fact that we can, we're able to do that shows that we're better chefs than we even think of because it makes you um, think on your feet, makes you just do things out of the box and that's super, super cool. So has that made me a better chef? Absolutely. Top Chef Canada has made me a way better chef and I'll still just keep on better, getting better. Uh, Stefan Caron, are you flexing your chest to impress the judges? <laughs> so this is a, this, he's on the photo um, that I posted out. It's just me, Hayden, Phil and Paul were standing there. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> All right, Hills eighty nine. How long was the filming or competition? We, we said that it's about it was about a month and a little bit. Uh, was it like Hell's Kitchen where you all stay in an off offsite location together? Uh, yep, that's correct. We stayed at a at a hotel. Uh, were you allowed to talk to your friends or family during the competition? No, we weren't. Very rare were we. We were allowed like a day off um, to just chat. But yeah, it was really just secluded and. Personally, sometimes, um, for me, that worked really well because I just needed to focus. Um, yeah. And then, how hard was it to not discuss the competition with anyone? It wasn't hard at all. Honestly, because of the fact of, I'm pretty good at keeping secrets. I'm pretty good at um, keeping things to myself. So, as long as I didn't tell anybody, and as long as no one asked, I'm not going to tell. Plus, I'm a big fan of, like, surprising people. I like the that sort of suspense or I like the fact that you don't know something and then it happens and you're like whoa how does that happen? I don't like spoilers I hate spoilers um, 
Were you allowed to share the results with close family members or employers if they also signed an NDA? Good question, and yes. So um, my work obviously had to know because I had to take off time off, not, not paid um, to go. Family members for sure because um, for some of these things, um, the producers actually reached out to them for information, uh, for photos, or even for that family challenge. And also just for safety, you know, having that emergency contact. Great questions, thank you. Um, Electric Life, did you apply for any other reality show before Top Chef Canada and any other that you want to target? I didn't apply for any other ones, no. Um, I don't actively search for culinary TV shows um, or TV shows in general. I don't know why, I just never did. Maybe I'm, I'm gonna start maybe doing more of it because I enjoy it, I do. Um, but if there's ones that I wanna target, I think The Amazing Race sounds really, really cool. Definitely would love to do that. Um, but even before Amazing Race, the one that I really wanna do is Top Chef Canada All-Stars. So if anyone's watching this, please email Course Entertainment, um, Food Network Canada, let them know that you guys want to see Top Chef Canada All-Stars. Uh, bring back the people that didn't win and you want me on it so <laughs> I'll do that uh, another reality show that I would like to be on um, fear factor I'd like to be on fear factor because I want to overcome my fears for certain things uh, I think that would be the only way to do it for some of those fears which we just go there so um, Top Chef Canada all-stars um, Amazing Race, Fear Factor, what else would I want to be on? I don't know, those ones for now. Um, not too, not big on like reality, reality shows and like, you know, have to be in, be in place with someone. I'm not a guy that likes conflict, I don't like drama. Um, so like those shows that are meant and, and like, you know, they strive and like they need drama to be a great show. I don't know if I can do that, but Oh, another other shows that I want to do is like any food show that needs a judge. I would love to be either the guest judge or like a, a judge or a host or something like that. Um, yeah, I'd love to. Why wouldn't I want to go try people's food? Okay, next question. Sam Lung asks, what's your favorite type of dish to cook? Favorite type of dish to cook is honestly things that I can use my hands to eat. Things that are sort of, especially proteins that are on the bones. So things like um, ribs, whole animals, chickens. Um, wings, um, whole fishes, uh, whole pigs, um, what else do I like? Things uh, like pizzas or sandwiches, um, yeah those are like, those are things I like, dumplings, uh, spring rolls, anything that I have to do with my hand and you have to eat with your hand, those are like my favorite things to make. But definitely the food stuff is, is uh, the protein wise it's going to be the meat, on the bone, Grilled, fried, roasted, barbecued, that's my jam. Teresa Nguyen asks, she says, congrats Wallace, thank you. What was the most important takeaways from your amazing experience? Most important takeaways is, are, actually, not is, are. See, my grammar's pretty good. First takeaway I can think of right off the bat is that I can honestly do anything I put my mind to. Um, those challenges are not easy and to be able to do it was amazing um, another takeaway ex that I learned is I am pretty OCD when it comes to organization um, I know that but like to be on Top Chef and to really get like organized and stuff I, I like made it like a point to make sure that my I had a schedule every time we're cooking to this to the minute everything was like planned out so that I knew exactly how I'm gonna go and if something goes wrong what can I take away from one area to another um, another important takeaway was for the people that I met that was a big one how can I forget that one all the chefs um, all those guys are insane they're amazing they're super talented super fun um, the staff the crew those guys are incredible um, I loved the whole TV stuff, like seeing the studio, the setup, seeing the team and how everything needs to be made, like all the behind the scenes stuff is really, really amazing. Um, also be able to just be able to see Top Chef Canada and Top Chef in general from 
not a viewer side. So we only get to see the great stuff, right, as a viewer, but now as a participant, as a person that's with the crew, with the directors, um, in the cars, seeing everybody move the equipment, and everything that has to do to make this show was amazing to watch and see. Another important takeaway, for sure, is the eight weeks that I've been on the show, and the weeks leading before and now, from now on, um, it's all the people that's been with me, meaning like whether it's new, old, fans, if you will, um, just so many people that I haven't met in person or met in person or haven't seen in so long, or we don't talk often, but this this being on Top Shift kind of brought it all together, brought everybody together, and we were able to sort of become this community, this team, um, Team Six Pack Chef, Team Wallace, um, and we just had a blast. It felt like everybody was in it together with me. And that was like insane. That was so cool to watch, so cool to see and experience. Um, it's also like when I go out now, um, which are very, very humbled and always um, surprises me. And I feel really, really amazing that it happens. Is like when people come down, just random people on the street or something, they'll be like, hey, you're that guy from, uh, you're, that, you're that top chef guy, you're Wallace. You're, you're like, I had someone say, hey, that, that mushroom dessert was insane. Um, yeah, so that's really cool. I personally like connecting with people. I like meeting new people and getting to hear people's stories and chat and talk. And I think Top Chef Canada has been a really great platform for me to be able to reach out even more. And yeah, I think those are just, those are some of the most amazing experiences that I've had so far. All right. Um, Culture Hop says he has a chest pump busting out of the of the apron. <laughs> the question is, if you were forced to open a restaurant with another contestant, who would it be? If I was forced to open a restaurant with another contestant, it'd be Paul. Yeah, it would probably be Paul just because of our cooking styles are, um, I think, very similar in regards to technique driven in regards to the level of, um, what do you want to say it? The level of skill that's involved, the plating, the thought process, the combination of flavors. Um, yeah, I think it would be Paul. Just strictly based on food and cuisine and culinary. Um, plus, we'd have tons of mushrooms. We'd have tons of mushrooms on that menu. <laughs> Jen loves foie. I like that name. We like foie a lot too. I have a question, but you probably aren't allowed to answer it. Well, we'll see. Uh, you'll ask it anyway, exactly. At the beginning of each episode, they show a building, a brick building suggesting that the episodes are filmed there. That's not really where Top Chef is filmed, is it? The reason why I ask is that I work in that building. <laughs> if Top Chef is taking place in my building, I need to know. By the way, sorry you didn't make it to the finale, but it looked like you were really close and I would have loved to have seen what you have come up with. They should have had a three-way finale. All right, like you said, I'm probably not allowed to answer it, so I'm not allowed to answer that. Um, that's pretty cool though. That's pretty cool that you're there. Um, and thank you, thank you, it was tough. Um, you know, almost like the bridesmaid, never the bride. But it's not over, it'll be okay. Um, they don't need a three-way finale. All they need, they, I think they had one before. They had a three-way before, but all they need is just the Top Chef Canada All-Stars bring me back. Let's do it. Lore.Z Which other competitor chef did you connect with the most? I connected with everybody. Like, we're all really, really cool. Um, who's a really, really cool one that I connected a lot with? I don't know. I could like, I, there wasn't like one that connected more with the others. Um, I, I, I can like think of moments each time with each different guy or girl. And we just shoot the sh shoot the shit kind of thing, and like had a good time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I I'm going through it. I really am. And I'm like, oh, if I'm with Hayden, we would play. Uh, I can't remember his name, his game. I can't remember what it's called. We play that. It was Phil. We talk about. Uh, we talk about our mutual friends. If it was Paul, we talk about mushrooms and Tofino. Um, Renee would talk about her rock star lifestyle. Talk about Nova Scotia. Um, Seb, we talk about Montreal, we talk about tattoos, 
uh, Tanya, we talk about Tanya and Aaron. We talk about Toronto. We talk about you know girls in the industry. We, uh, Tanya would also be a goofball. She's a big health geek, so we talk about like matcha teas and stuff. Um, Takashi, we talked about Japanese knives. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna stop there because there's tons of questions. But it's a pretty much say is like you know. I connected with everybody, I loved everybody. With Bennett, we talked about freaking his pants, why he wears like super tight pants for a big boy. Uh, and also talked about London and how he got tricked to come down to live in Saskatoon. So yeah, thanks for that question. Uh, Victoria Militech, no question, Oh, okay. But just cried when you left. Oh, thanks Victoria, I appreciate that. Um, thank you. I wanted you to win the whole thing, me too, I did too. But I enjoyed every minute of show up until then. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Man, I'm thirsty today. Um, sorry, Victoria. We'll make it happen. We'll, I'll win something else. I, it's coming. We're, something's going to happen. H. Tanaga. Have you talked to Bennett after the Wonderland episode? Did he apologize at all? Did Mark talk to you after? I was rooting for you. You did great regardless in a class act. Thanks for the question. Um, I think I've answered this before, and don't mind answering it now. Um, yep, me and Bennett talk. We still talk. We're like we're boys. He's still my big brother. Um, you know, die side forever. He did apologize. We, we like doesn't no no apology is really needed. Um, he said what he said. He had every reason to. He was on. He was about to leave. It's rather that he say something that he wants to get it off his chest and regret. Um, I don't. I didn't do anything wrong, so I didn't really think it was just more of like unexpected like we hugged it out we're big boys we hugged it out at the, at the hotel we did our thing um did mark talk to you after nope nope what you saw is what you saw we're not allowed to talk to judges we don't see the judges at all except for the judging table as well as when they come eat our food um thanks for that question next question is from just lou glad you made it to the finale my favorite episode was when you won for the mushroom dessert thank you uh yeah that was cool too that was super dope like cooking mushrooms for dessert was pretty damn epic. During the competition, did you have time to work out and was it hard to stick to your six pack eating habits? Um, so, I've done this for a while now. Now it's about six years since I really got into competing, bodybuilding, nutrition, diet kind of stuff. So I'm not really a rook anymore and I've learned to be able to sort of gauge my meals, be able to see what I need, what I don't need. Um, I did work out every day. Um, I worked out at the hotel. I just made it happen. Whether it was they had cardio machines, fine. They had weights up to 50 pounds. You know, so if you do enough time under tension, squeezing. Um, you know, I'm not curling 50 pounds for biceps or arms, so that's cool too. Um, 50 pounds is more enough, especially if the weight's not enough. You can just up the volume. Also, body weight stuff, supersets. So, yep, I did it every day. It was, it's part of me. It's my routine. It's my, it's what I tell people. It's like when you wake up and you don't brush your teeth or you don't have your coffee, you feel like your day's not right or nothing's started.